Hello. Um, you recently published an article in Raseal called The Guarani Aquifer Agreement and Transboundary Aquifer Law in the SADC Comparing Apples and Oranges. And Francesco, you're an expert in the Guarani Aquifer. What led you to write this specific article? Precisely because I have been involved with the Guarani for now over five years. Uh, I was interested in looking at the Guarani and something else and uh, the experience I had over the last two years uh, going to the SADC region, the Southern African Development Community region, brought to my attention the possibility of bringing these two areas together. Uh, I was approached by Raseel, by the special, by the guest editor, Professor Hadiza Morgera at Edinburgh University, and uh, she asked for something on water. And I thought, well, this is an interesting opportunity to write something together with Stephanie comparing something very difficult to compare mm -hmm. and and that was the the push let's say to look at something I already knew the Guarani and something that I was starting to learn more about the the Sadiq area and Stephanie you're a PhD researcher in transboundary aquifer law and I think you're specializing in the Sadiq region mm -hmm. aren't you and so in your mind what are the key points that would come out of this article well, we make various comparative observations, but I think the, the underlying question of the paper um, is the question of, as Francesco said, can two radically different um, legal arrangements, that's a, the Guarani Aquifer Agreement, which um, currently exists uh, as a document, and legal arrangements in the SADC region, which uh, don't have an aquifer-specific agreement as yet, um, can that even be compared? to different, very different legal arrangements and very different geopolitical social contexts. Um, so can they be com compared and should they be compared in uh, international environmental law and, and what does this, what lessons does this bring? And we concluded that the comparison is useful, um, but only if taken as a process of knowledge acquisition, um, because such a broad comparative analysis is really limited in its ability to produce direct policy recommendations, and we wouldn't advise that. So. In other words, gaining knowledge of uh, regional governance practices in relation to different aquifer characteristics, social characteristics, geopolitical char characteristics, that's really important in this underdeveloped area because, um, as we know, discussions regarding the future of transboundary aquifer law are gaining momentum on the international mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. And can I ask it, what trends you saw that were in common between the two? I don't want to ruin the conclusion for the readers, but uh, I'm fascinated to know. Mm. Well. I think it's difficult to actually answer that question because, as Stephanie said, I mean, here we're comparing something that is already there, despite it's not enforced, the Guarani Aquifer Agreement, and something that does not exist. It's literally comparing apples and oranges. And what 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 I think is important is that there is interest for this kind of research. Uh, I myself, when I was uh, in, in the framework of a very interesting project called Greta in Southern Africa. I presented on the Guarani, and people there, policymakers, stakeholders, were interested in knowing about other experiences, other practices. Forget about whether they're good, bad, best. They are thirsty for knowing what's happening elsewhere. And mm. I've seen this also in other experiences I have recently had in Central America and so forth. So I think that more than the trends, which we do, suggested to some extent what led to the Guarani Aquifer Agreement, are those similar patterns happening in the SADC? The real important point is that yes it is an academic paper, yes it's in a, in a journal, but at the same time it is a topic, this bringing together experiences from different countries in an emerging field, as Stephanie was saying, that will be of interest also to policymakers and stakeholders. And I think this is what our article tries to do. Okay, well thank you very much. Congratulations on publishing such a fascinating article.